So guys, today we are tackling a DC TV kind of roundup news special. Today we are looking at more pictures of Red Hood, but also the ones that we were kind of, well, the one that we were looking for to see the hood actually down and see more of the mask. We have got Stargirl information, very interesting information, a little bit of a oopsie, uh, basically confirming, low-key confirming Green Lantern. We, we need to get into that. And also a few other tidbits, including DC TV returning dates for the new season. So... Roll the intro. I don't know what that was. How's it going, guys? Welcome back to a brand new video, I suppose. As I just mentioned at the beginning in the intro, this is going to be a little bit of a mix and match up. So, you know what's coming? Timestamps. Uh, the video bar will indeed be timestamped according to what is going on in that portion of the video. The chapters slash timestamps will be in a top pin comment. Or if you hover your little mousey mouse mouse, which I was about to bring mine up, but it, the, the Y won't stretch that far, you should be able to see it on, on like the chapters on the video. I'm going to ask you one thing before we get into that. One thing. Like the video. Will you do it? I don't know. But hey. I asked, and that's all I can do. Let's start off with Stargirl. So recently I went over the castings of uh, Jonathan Cake as the Shade, also Nick Tarabay as uh, Eclipso, who I really feel like will do a good job as Eclipso, I've seen him in several things, and I forgot to mention somehow, but I, I totally forgot that he was Captain Boomerang in the Arrowverse, so he's kind of coming back into the DC TV realm of things. And also we had Issa as an undisclosed kind of role. But I kind of think everybody uh, was assuming who she would be on the comment section of my videos. And, and it's just all over the internet. People were thinking, oh, she may very well be Jade, the new Green Lantern, should I say, Alan Scott's daughter. And there has been a, there's been a photo going around at the minute on social media. And I, I had to include it in this video just because, you know, I would love to know your thoughts about this. And I feel like it kind of does hit the nail on the head for the speculation of the character. So Yvette Monreal, I, I believe that's how you pronounce Yvette's second name. She did a little bit of an oopsie because she put on a, at the minute, obviously Stargirl's filming and you know, you get a lot of tidbit behind the scenes, awesome stuff from the cast. They like to put stuff like up this on their Instagram stories. But there's a little bit of an oversight here because we had Yisa, and I hope I'm pronouncing Yisa's name correctly. While she was holding her coffee, she was kind of wearing a ring. Now I'm gonna get this up in my Twitter feed here. This isn't my photo, obviously. This was screen snapped from Yvette's Instagram story, so it's literally public. She did take it down, but hey, we, we talk about the news here, and as I said, it, it's not massively surprising because the whole fandom was like, okay, you know, we've been thinking Green Lantern would come to the show in one way or another, or maybe a legacy character, and with Yisa coming to the show, they were thinking maybe Jade, and we, I'm going to get into my reaction to what I think of Lanterns being on the show because I was actually doubtful of it. So seeing this which I've just pulled up. I can't confirm it, but it's kind of obvious. If you look at that ring that she's wearing, it's got a little bit of a green hue to it, but when you go into the second photo of this person who's uploaded it here, you can see it is more or less, you can't, you know, I wish I could like rotate and warp the image through Photoshop, but that is most likely the Green Lantern emblem, kind of Alan Scotty, kind of, you know, lantern chargey, you know what I'm trying to say, logo on the freaking ring. It's obviously not a great look at it because it's like a side angle. Jade does have that. Sometimes she doesn't need it, but I'm guessing they're going with the fact that uh, the ring will be charging, like the powers and all of that good stuff. And I can't wait to see the effects on that. Basically, guys, without me rambling too much, I think it's safe to assume, especially from Yvette's Instagram story, that Issa is playing Jade, uh, Alan Scott's daughter. She has a brother as well we can't forget. Her twin brother is Todd. I have no idea what they're going to do with that in the show. I'm sure he will be in it. I'm sure he's going to be referenced at least. We're going to have to wait and see there, but it's just super interesting that she's already wearing the ring. Why is she there now in Blue Valley? Like, why wasn't she there last season? Is she part of Blue Valley High School? Has she transferred to Blue Valley? I don't know. There's, there's so many different ways that Jeff Johns could take this story. Uh, another thing is, maybe she heard about the prowess of Stargirl and the new JSA after having 
having defeating defeated sorry the isa she's 20 years old in real life so you have to assume that she's going to be a student at the school just like the new jsa members already are i know probably jeff johns has a lot more surprises up his sleeve than just this and 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 a lot of fans already knew anyway that yisa would be basically this character to wrap it up i didn't necessarily think they were going to do lanterns on the show or a lantern this soon because i was saying in season one we've already got freaking our man we've got wildcat we've got dr midnight we've got stargo we've got stripe so to add another character that would require cg obviously through her lantern ring i wasn't so sure if they were going to do that obviously the lantern powers but i guess we're getting that and also just knowing that stargo is 13 episodes again in season two makes me very very happy because i i i'd been reassured about this anyway through my interview with jay Austin walker who played brainwave jr check that out if you haven't seen it already but just knowing it's maintaining the flow of 13 episodes that's going to be quite cohesive storyline is great and i can't wait to see what these projections from the lantern rings powers is going to look like and i would love to know your thoughts on this and what you think of this ring design down in the comments below so current walters i i, I wasn't going to make a video on this instantly people were messaging it to me straight away on halloween uploaded a picture to his instagram saying happy halloween and wow it's like he heard my cries and probably a lot of people's cries for seeing this although i would have loved the side profile is that he he showed the red hood costume the mask specifically up without the hood over it so i i, I wonder if that was just a planned thing anyway i'm sure he's going to do something like that but it is intriguing maybe he i mean obviously curran was looking at what people thought of this of this uh reveal and he must have seen people wanting to see it with the hood down now, yet again, maybe this is just me being, like, extra needy. It's like, I want a side profile pic now. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, I still really stand by what I said. I really like the design. I really do. It, it is comic book accurate in, in a way that is made up of different iterations. A lot of people have pointed that out. And when I say comic book accurate, that doesn't mean just because it's made up of different iterations, like a collaboration of Red Hood inspiration, that it doesn't mean that it isn't comic book accurate. The only thing um, I will stand by, like, what a lot of people are pointing out is as cool as the mask looks like it, it looks and this is quite often a thing in design that's really hard to overcome is the mask looks a little bit too big for like what the body is and Curran's a big guy like I mean I'm sure you've seen him on his Instagram he's working out all the time he's already said he's trying to put on more muscle because obviously Jason Todd Red Hood is bigger than Jason Todd Robin in the comics and he's fully aware of that he's doing his due diligence to so to speak he's, he's putting the work in but even so, the mask obviously going over somebody's head is quite a big thing. So I'm glad he showed us what it looks like with the hood down. It doesn't look as bad here though in terms of like what I was going on about with how big it is. Maybe that's just the angle... Yet again, want a side profile. It would be really cool to know if it's like a Deathstroke mask, you know, where he has the front bit, but the back bit is just like a strap going onto the back of his hair, if that makes sense. Or is it an actual full mask? Like, I, I don't know. A lot of people are saying, why can't the eyes be smaller? Like, I wish the eyes were smaller. I get what you're saying there, but at the end of the day, you really do have to be realistic here. These eyes are the size they are because at the end of the day the stunt person or Curran himself underneath the mask needs to be able to see he needs to be able to see if he had the really thin slits of eyes that red hood has in the comics how do you see through that do you know what i mean like you can't that's a lot of things about whether there's star wars masks mandalorian helmets or god knows what like the mandalorian helmets and the one going really off topic is just one long slit how do people fight out of that so you have to compromise and give them the respect of that they try to bring it to fruition as best as they could i don't have a problem with them anyway they, they, they look great to me um and, and so does all of it i do admit though people keep coming about um the rip off iron man i don't go that far but I wish that bit there wasn't there. I wish maybe it was just smooth at the bottom. Because it does, every time I look at it, it does give me Iron Man vibes at the bottom. Just painted red. Obviously not literally because it, at the end of the day, there's lots of differences between this and the Iron Man mask. Also at the minute, it's interesting looking at the fallout of what people are saying about Red Hood. Saying, oh I'm sure Red Hood's going to do good on Titans in a sense. But I wish they would do this, that and the other. Or they're, they're just, what's the point if they're not going to do it through Joker? And interestingly, I believe... I saw this the other day. I think it's been taken down. Somebody uploaded a photo saying rumor Red Hood will be killed by Joker on Titans kind of thing. And I believe Curran Walters liked it. Now, I've been saying this the whole time and I may know a thing or two, 
But I'm not going to go out there and act all cocky like, oh, yeah, that, trust me, this is... like I, I'm not like that, really, and, and I can't even say too much. But the Joker thing is a thing that I have heard for a long time now. Not a very, very, very long time, but w w within the kind of realms of what you would feel like the timeline would make sense with all of this news coming out. And that's why I've theorized in the way it will happen, because... I don't think they're going to be able to use Joker in the sense that you're going to see him bashing the crap out of Jason Todd. But just to reiterate my theory again, and if that is an actual true screenshot with Curran Walters liking that rumor, because that was his way of saying, yes, we're doing the Red Hood origin. Don't worry, guys. So if you want to see Red Hood, we, we will do it the way you want to see it. I have heard myself from inside sources, people who have literally worked on Titans, that that is happening. But that doesn't mean you're going to get... Under the Red Hood, like animation style, you see him getting crowbarred, whippy dooby doo. I think it's literally going to be the way I've explained it the before, in that they will do it in like the Titans Trigon reality manipulation. You know, you saw Joker like get KO'd on the car, you saw Dick Grayson go up to him in hospital before Batman killed him. It's going to probably be a bit better than that, but imagine a scenario where Jason's in a room, the Red, this is a moment in the season, like Titan Season 3, Episode 6, where he finally unmasks himself. The Titans up until this point didn't know that he was Red Hood, and then they realize it's Jason. All the time in that conversation, maybe there's flashes, you know, ambiguous kind of silhouette esque kind of depiction on screen of like, you know, a purple suit forearm holding a crowbar and you flash to Jason's face and body just getting beaten. That's one way they could easily get away with doing it. And you know, being faithful to what fans want. Like, sure, they could easily get away with saying the Joker killed Jason, Bruce takes some time off, trains a new Robin, and that's why the Titans are in Gotham this season. That would be easy. That'd be, I, mean, I think a lot of people would be happy with that, but I think they can get away with doing a very ambiguous shot, um, as I keep saying. Like, ambiguity is the best way they can do it. Like, don't actually cast someone, just get a stand-in, put a purple suit on, like you did in Season 1 with the Joker and have the main camera focused on Jason uh, in his perspective. Just, I don't know, maybe a massive light is on him as he's tied up and as he's getting struck with the crowbar. I don't know how he comes back to life in the Titan situation. I think things will be different. It is an adaptation at the end of the day. But with this now, with me hearing what I've heard behind the scenes and Curran now liking a photo saying that he'll be killed by the Joker, I don't see why they won't do it. And lastly, everyone, the returning dates for these shows. I thought I'd check this in here because you know, not everyone is always on the internet. Maybe you're watching this right now and you literally don't know when Batwoman's returning. Maybe some of you, a lot of you probably don't care about that. But anyway, if you're interested, uh, Batwoman is returning Sunday, January 17th. Hey, why not check out my recent Batwoman suit breakdown video? Uh, we also have Monday, February 8th, Black Lightning, season four. And also The Flash is returning on Tuesday, February 23rd, along with Superman and Lois. Obviously, I'll be reviewing The Flash as I normally do, but now we've also got Superman and Lois, so I'll be reviewing that as well. And actually, I do review Batwoman for as long as I can bear to. As for Stargirl, Legends of Tomorrow, and Supergirl, that will be, that. that's later on. Like, there is no dates for that as of right now. I'm really hoping for Stargirl uh, to debut season two around maybe April, May, June. I know that's quite, that's like three month block for me to say an estimate, but probably June-ish, but let's hope for a little bit earlier because that would be awesome. I think they could do it, 13 episodes. So you never know. Uh, but that is the gist of this video, guys. A little DC TV wrap up today. Hope you enjoyed it. Of course, there's uh, several topics today. So I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comments below. I always love making these videos. But if you want to support me making these videos even more, all you have to do is leave a like on this video. And if you want to go the extra mile, uh, you can check out the top pinned comment where I leave links to my Patreon. Also, I have a join button on this channel. But other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day. And I'll see you starlings, bat family, and uh, red hoodians, and god knows what else in the next <coughs> video. Goodbye. <laughs>